All right, so Google just released an updated responsive search ads guide. Um, they call it a guide to writing ads that perform. And responsive search ads are the primary text ads that you see when you go to google.com and search for something. So this is, this is different than Google shopping ads that show up. This is different, obviously, than YouTube ads or the, the display image ads that you see as you browse different websites that are powered by Google. Responsive search ads are text ads that show up on google.com. And the way you create a responsive search ad is by providing multiple different headline options and description options to Google. And then Google mixes and matches and creates combinations that best match up with the unique uh, search term that someone is searching right now, as well as trying to, to identify which combinations have the best click-through rates, conversion rates, things like that. And so this is a guide. This is Google's latest best practices when it comes to writing RSAs, responsive search ads that perform. So a couple of things that I want to highlight here. You've got a lot of, you know, general kind of over overarching stuff that Google communicates in this guide about why you should use search ads, etc. The big thing that's that's important to remember with responsive search ads is that there is this dynamic aspect of many different combinations. Google has actually done a much better job recently of helping you kind of visualize what the different combinations might look like when you're creating the ad. So I found that to be very helpful when creating responsive search ads. So Google's released some information about how Google selects different combinations and also how they report data to you. So within the platform, Google will tell you, um, they'll give you kind of a status of how a particular asset, let's say a particular headline or description is performing. They might say it's learning, which means that they're still collecting enough data to know how it's performing. Uh, they might say it's poor, in which case you might want to replace that asset with a different asset, test something else. They might say it's good um, or great in terms, of, um, in terms of performance. Typically good, poor, and learning are what you're going to see. Context is, as always, super important with, with ads. Whenever we are creating campaigns and creating ad groups, the intent and theme of the specific keywords that we target in that ad group are what is crucial when it comes to creating ad copy for that ad group that is going to be relevant and emotionally compelling. And so that's why you generally don't want situations where you've got a hundred different keywords, all different types of keywords and the same exact ad copy for those keywords. You want to customize the ad copy, of course, to the intent of that ad group and break out as many ad groups as you need in order to accomplish that to have effective, effective ad copy. Pinning is something that is an option within Google, and there's a lot of perspectives on whether pinning is good or bad. So with pinning, you can tell Google, hey, I want this particular headline to always be the first headline that comes up. It's kind of going counter to this idea of responsive search ads, because the responsive aspect is Google mixing and matching and deciding what should go where. With pinning, you're saying, nope, I know what I want, where I want it, put it there. And Google's not a big fan of pinning because Google generally believes that their machine learning is going to do a better job of figuring out what works works than the human writing the ad. But pinning is an option, particularly for situations where you have to have something like a legal disclaimer within the ad copy itself and something that's visible and so you can pin that. But Google still recommends if you're going to pin something to pin a couple of different options. So for, in other words, you could say, hey, here's two different headlines you can test between for the first headline in the ad. And they still recommend that over pinning just one headline. Now, what I've seen uh, consistently is that if you pin headlines, it's pretty much impossible to get an excellent ad strength rating from Google. Um, and we'll talk about ad strength ratings here in a second as well. However, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pin. We always have to look at the nuances of each situation when we're deciding whether or not to pin. But having excellent ad strength is not always better than knowing for sure that, hey, this, this messaging is always going to show up in the ad because we know we have to emphasize this messaging. When it comes to ad strength, there are a number of different components that go into it. And so you'll often see that if you are doing, let's say, competitor conquesting, where you're targeting people who are looking for a competitor, you might not be able to get an excellent ad strength there either because you're not going to put your competitor's name in your ad copy. Obviously, that would be um, that would violate policies and a whole a whole lot of different issues. Um, and so, because quote unquote your ad isn't as relevant to the keywords as it could be because those keywords aren't a part of your ad copy, Google might not give you an excellent strength. 
that's that's okay because one thing that's really interesting that Google has clarified in this guide is that ad strength is not actually a factor of ad ranking quality score. Um, Google's clarifying that ad strength is kind of a, a standalone measure of whether they think your ad is going to perform well. But what they're saying here is that the ad strength rating is not a factor in the auction during serving. So in other words, a, a poor ad isn't going to be penalized by Google compared to an excellent ad just because it's poor versus excellent. Now, if it performs poorly as an ad because the aspects of the ad are leading Google to say it's poor, then obviously it's not going to perform as well as an ad that just performs better. And so the ad rank will be impacted by that. But the strength itself is is really just a, a signal to us that the ad is well set up for success. It's not a ranking factor. I think that's something really, really important that they've made more clear in this update than they have in the past. It's along the lines of how quality score has evolved to where quality score also itself is a diagnostic tool to give us a sense for how a keyword is performing and ranking, but in and of itself, it's not a factor that's impacting ad rank. So I think that's that's the most important thing I wanted to call out from this guide um, is that, that idea about ad strength not actually directly playing a factor into ad rank. Uh, Google also released some very helpful information and thresholds to understand what some of their um, statuses mean. So an asset that is denoted within the platform as learning means that it doesn't have enough data yet to get a rating. We know that. But now they've specified that it needs 500 impressions, that particular asset, let's say it's a headline, that at that headline itself needs to show 500 times and the ad itself has to have over 2000 impressions in the Google search top segment. That means above organic results, position one, two, three, or four on the Google search uh, page in order for that asset to move out of learning into um, into a, a you know, low or good uh, performance. Um, so if you have a really low volume ad, you know, it might take a very long time for those assets to get out of learning phase because there might not be enough impressions to get you there. And then Google says, hey, if they if they say that an asset is, is performing low, then you should replace that asset with something else, test something else because they've seen that people are not engaging well. So there's some other good things as well in this guide. Key takeaways that Google mentions is the more assets, the better. Now, I'm going to say always take this with a grain of salt because more is not always better if you're giving four things for the system to work with. It's better to have an ad with three headlines that are really, really great at headlines than an ad with 15 headlines that are all mediocre because Again, the actual ad rank and performance and ultimately conversions we're going to see from ads is going to be impacted by the actual headlines, the actual descriptions that we're showing. So that's really important when we're creating ads. We've got to be strategic, not just say, here's 15 random things. Cool. We're going to throw that in the ad. Hey, Google says it's excellent because we've got 15 headlines. Great. It must be a good ad. Not necessarily. We still have to be super strategic about thinking, what is it that we're that we're putting into the ad copy? If this headline displays, does that make sense? Does it make sense in the context of the other descriptions and headlines that may display as well, etc.? So that's important. And then again, ad strength is really a diagnostic tool to help us understand whether or not the ads are likely set up well for success. The goal should always be not ad strength, but actual performance. Clicks, but ultimately conversions. Are the ads driving conversions? If an ad with poor strength is driving lots of great conversions, cool. That's not uh, that, that that's that's more important than getting that strength up to excellent. As always, you know, Google's emphasizing that responsive search ads partner particularly well with smart bidding, um, and which is target CPA bidding, target ROAS bidding, etc., as well as broad match, which we talked about a lot as well. Hey, do you want to dominate Google Ads and grow your business? Subscribe to this channel and we'll help you learn how. You see, we've made almost half a billion dollars for our clients from Google Ads. In fact, according to Google, Stub Group is one of the best performing Google partners in the world. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like the one you just watched and learn how to dominate Google Ads, increase profits, and grow your business too. And check out the description below for your own free Google Ads profit plan, customized for your business. Thanks.